Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and time once again for my pseudo cast, and this time, this time around, uh, going back to good old, yeah, going back to good old fashioned dungeon synth, uh, just came up on my YouTube recommendations, I think I heard most, if not all of this once, and I'm like, hey, this sounds pretty cool, so, thought I'd go with this. And I, I gotta kinda sound test this first. But anyway, um, I'm having a can of uh, V8 Energy Orange Pineapple flavor. So. Okay, but um. Um, otherwise, uh, didn't really do a lot, um, other than playing, uh, lots of city skylines, but even after my stream throughout the night, I was still playing it, um, I actually, uh, I'll prop, I'll, I'm still debating on whether or not to go ahead and, uh, start a brand new city on my next stream, or just continue on with the one I worked on last night off stream. Um, the, my current one, I didn't use any cheats, so no sandbox mode or anything, and, um, just like my very, very first time, time, uh, playing the game, um, I am, I'm making money, uh, my city is solvent, although, to be fair, I did have to use a couple loans to, to bail myself out of trouble, so, but got them paid off, and pretty good and prosperous city um, and uh, and like usual just kind of been experimenting a bit here and there too trying out trying out other stuff <coughs> and yeah the the cop that I thought I got rid of uh, sometime last week is starting to make a comeback all this while being um, um on Friday last Friday being called to the office and basically uh basically being told that my job that it was basically the manager said give me a good reason why I shouldn't fire you because technically he was supposed to um I'm going to kind of repeat myself here ladies and gentlemen but um but at my store Walmart we it's a universal policy that um you can have up to 5 call-ins in a rolling six month period but if you get that six call in you're out the door and uh there's the only ex the only time you can call in and have it not count against you is uh if for covid symptoms or if you're at or if it's covid related if it's if it's covid related reasons so but um but yeah I, anyway i was at um I originally was at eight Collins, so technically, manager was supposed to have fired me right then and there. But uh, when I told him that um, I took a week, um, uh, the week before then, I took um, I basically took my work week off, just uh, on uh, kind of a self quarantine because just just being cautious. I was in a room, uh, I was at Applebee's with my mom and my sister, who I haven't seen in a very long time. But uh, I was at uh, Applebee's eating with them, and none of nobody in that room was wearing their masks. So that kind of that kind of had me a little paranoid. So I went ahead and took the week off. But anyway, come to find out later that um oh how did he put it? I'm supposed I'm supposed to contact a company called Sedgwick, like they handle like leave of absences and stuff like that. I was supposed to have talked to them, but when I looked up their information, they said you only contact them when you're going to be gone for more than three days. And uh, I was only going to be gone for three. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see a need to call them. Come to find out later that if it's COVID related, yes, you are. So, but uh, because of that, he, um, he excused my, uh, he excused those three absences and brought it down to five. So. If I call in one more time, I'm out. So, I'm still I'm still kind of shook 
I'm still a little shook by it. Um, just, it's, it's, it's something that's going to be very tough for me to get over. I guess I could probably, I could probably classify it as a traumatic event. So, so, and, um, I think my other thing I kind of worry about that too is, uh, thinking management, now that, um, now that they know that I can't call in, like, at all, for whatever reason, got a feeling they're going to start being more douchey now. You know, they can't, you know, they can, they can basically run me ragged now, or they can run me more ragged, because of, um, if I get hurt, I can't call in. Um, I think, I think I can go, I can go see a doctor. If I, if I get really injured, I can go see a doctor about it and get me a doctor's note. And even then, I have to contact Sedgwick. Did, okay, okay, it's coming back to me now. The manager said I can, I can apply for what's called an intermediate, or intermittent leave of absence. Like, if I get a, like, if I hurt my back or shoulders or whatever, you know, again, see a doctor and then talk to Sedgwick and and then get a get a temporary leave of absence approved through them. Um, if I do that, then any other call-in shouldn't, call shouldn't count against me. So. But like I like I said, I'm still I'm still a little distraught after that episode, so I'm probably not gonna be so I'm probably definitely gonna be looking at things differently when I definitely going to be looking at things differently when I when I go back to work. So, but uh, but I guess some amount of small comfort to me is uh, I'm not the only one that's gone through this. One of my coworkers. He kind of warned me about this a few days in advance. Like they're starting to, they're starting to bring in people trying to fire them, which, it, it, it might, at least in my mind, it's got to be a scare tactic. I just, I just now thought of this too. Oh wait, I think I said this yesterday too. Um, I think it might be a scare tactic too, because we're on a skeleton crew. So, on one end, it's kind of, it's kind of counterproductive to sit here and sit here and you know being understaffed, but then turning around and firing an employee that's been with Walmart for 15 years. I mean, you'd be losing a lot of experience if you fired me. I mean, again, we're, you know, we don't have enough people to do everything. And they're going to turn around and fire more people? No. So I can't help but think that it's also got to be a scare tactic, too. I mean, I wouldn't call them out on it, but I, that's, that's what I'm thinking, too, so. Okay. But anyway, um, getting off getting off that subject, I don't really want to talk about it anymore. So, unless I totally forget, I won't talk about this episode uh, for the rest of my cast. So, but anyway, um, like I've been saying, uh, or like I said a, a few minutes ago, I've been playing a lot of City Skylines, and um, now that I think about it, I was like this with all the other Sim City games too. I'm freaking hooked. I mean, it's, it's to where it's to where I'm even playing the game while not streaming, and and um, very rarely am I like this. Most every other game I play, it just doesn't feel like doesn't feel right unless I'm streaming it. Um, City Skylines, or for those that don't know, for those that don't know, um, City Skylines is the 2015 equivalent of SimCity. So yeah, but uh, I've been playing the crap out of it. But the same thing I was pretty much doing with all the other SimCities I played. I just play the living hell out of them. So. And, um, I, I have, uh, I was giving thought to maybe going ahead and, uh, streaming it, like, at night, but, uh, I haven't had any, I haven't had, uh, I've had some terrible luck streaming at night, like, nobody shows up. It's like I'm playing to, I'm playing to basically nobody. I think maybe, like, two people will show up, but then... They show up for a hot minute and then disappear after that. So, it feels like I'm wasting effort then. So, oh, and um, and uh, I have also been watching a fair amount of uh, I've I've mentioned this guy before. His name's Do Not Eat. Um, I started watching a 
like the first the first two or three episodes of his urban planning series. Some pretty nightmarish stuff in there. But nevertheless, it was also one of my inspirations for playing City Skylines. Watching that, that and um I started um I started I started adding this to chat, like a chat message. Like if I have time. You know, in case any any of my viewers wants to know my inspiration for playing for taking up taking up uh, City Skylines. But it's gonna be it's gonna be this do not eat series on urban planning. And um another channel, again, you guys have probably heard me say this before, uh not just bikes. He does a video series on a um on a book called Strong Towns. Or it's it's actually a channel. But yeah, it's uh it's another it's another urban planning urban planning channel. So I mean these these two here kinda inspired me into playing uh again playing City Skylines. I guess um one drawback that I can think of to this game though um there's a there's a lot of DLC for it, but unfortunately, there unfortunately none of them's free, and they're all pretty expensive. I think I think last I looked, you can buy all the DLC in this game for like for like around 150 bucks. Like ah uh, no no no. So I'll I'll stick with what uh, Jake Ryan gifted me. There's a uh, I know uh, there is, there's some free items, for lack of a better word, that you can download. But um, I haven't, I haven't really delved too deeply into it. But uh, from the stuff I saw on the, on the game's main menu, it didn't look like anything I'd be interested in. But like I said, I might have to. I think there, I think there's actually a, uh, I probably have to go on like the Steam Workshop, and see what else they got. But yeah, definitely one thing I learned from Do Not Eat and uh, and all the other ones. Never bull never bulldoze a building unless you have a damn good reason for doing it. Um These days I think I've kind of I've kind of blurred it, but uh if I made a mistake and if uh, if a building is in the process of being built, like no one's actually no no families or anything have actually moved in, then yeah, I'll go ahead and bulldoze the building and fix my issue, and then, and then or and then, and then correct my issue. So, but yeah, like like I said, I don't. They're talking about that too. Um, you know, just, I mean, you know, clear cutting clear cutting buildings to replace them with like huge apartment complex or. You know, huge high-rise apartment complexes and basically Trump Plaza towers and that kind of stuff. I mean, that I mean that displaces families. It ruins communities. And um, I just thought of this too. There's a and uh, there's a one word that he uh, it, it was actually I think the second or third episode uh, called gentrification. I actually looked it up. Um. In a in a way, it's what I've been go it's what I've been going through at um at Walmart, and probably a lot of the other jobs that I've worked at for many years. They've uh, they've undergone their own kind of version of gentrification. For those that don't know what that word means, um, gentrification is something that applies to that applies to housing. Um, it's uh, specifically it's when um. Oh, how did it go? It's when uh let's say like like low value slums well to to cite an example, it's when uh let's say an expense like an expensive building has been placed there. Um some kind of prop some kind of some kind of high value property upgrade occurred in this slummy area. You know, I you know like you know basically something that's gonna bring in a lot of wealthy rich people. You know, like I said, maybe you know 
building like a building a high rise near a slum is for all the sense that makes you know but I'm trying to cite an example here but uh, it's basic it's basically gentrification is one of it's it's the changing of a culture of a neighborhood or the changing of a character of a neighborhood you know change you know it's a a changeover of the community I gotta I gotta check some okay but it's it's a it's a changing over of a community and typically typically it's a it's basically a change for the worst like I said um you know it's like when a when a poor when a poor slum has like a, a bunch of rich wealthy people moving in for whatever reason eventually because um because when wealthy people come into that area you know they're bringing their wealth with them too they're bringing lots of money uh, paying for lots of stuff um, that's which causes landlords and uh, shopkeepers and whatnot hey like wow hey if they got all this money I gotta be you know might as well raise my prices man let's get more you know let's get more of that money you know you know rent goes up um, nearby shop prices go up you know again when the that was how he put it when the when land value goes up rent goes up so I think he said um rent and land value are kind of kind of go hand in hand but anyway what it what res what ends up happening is all the poor all the people that had lived in that that had lived in that area for like long periods of time um end up being forced out for whatever reason like like uh i think one example is where they wanted to bulldoze these <clears throat> these uh run down apartments so they can put a high right you know put like a high-rise apartment complex in its place so all of them you know and then again gentrification is what results from that you know the the whole the whole flavor the whole flavor of an area changes now because the original people had moved out had been forced out and these new different people have moved in um my job at walmart is pre has pretty much undergone its own version of gentrification like when i first when i first got the job there it was a super tight-knit community or tight-knit tight-knit enough to where um we were having like we were having softball games like at least once a month like everybody on the night shift um some people during the days and different shifts and all that but basically a lot of people from our store oh and um uh, let me let me back up um this is this is uh back about 10 years ago when i first got transferred to this place but yeah ever you know again they're they're playing softball like at least once or twice once or twice a month um i guess before before i got there they were even having cookouts and stuff but uh you know again um every you know everybody's just everybody's just having fun hanging out with everybody it was it was very much a it, i it's i don't want to really say tighten it because it wasn't like the entire store was doing everything together. I mean, everybody still had their little cliques or had their little groups and whatnot. But, you know, when somebody says, hey, we're going to have softball next week. All right, I'll be there. You know, and next, you know, a big, huge, you know, a whole bunch of people show up. And but um, but over time, when people were quitting or when people were getting fired. And again, gentrification started to occur. And there was kind of a there was kind of a snowball effect here too. Um, I think I said this to one of the new guys that started a job there. I'm like, yeah, um, it's a vicious cycle. The more people that quit, the more people out that quit. It it's it, it's pretty much what's been ha what's happened, you know. Because when your best friend quits your quits her job, you don't see him anymore. You know, presumably one of the biggest reasons why you got that job was because your friends worked there. But now that your friends no longer work there, there's no longer no point in you being there. You'll end up quitting it you'll end up quitting as well. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of husband wife teams or a lot of husbands and wives that uh work together at you know at whatever job I'm working at. But you know, what of those you know what of those two will end up getting fired or end up getting written up or whatnot and then that's just gonna piss off the other half 
So that's you're basically looking at two people quitting now. So again, and then, and then the you know, and then the new people that get brought in are people that you don't know. So yeah, gentrification is definitely got to be a word that I'm going to carry with me to the grave because <laughs> story of my life, pretty much. Like I said, and then Walmart's the first one that comes to mind. Hey, let me uh, let me do a sound test. That kind of got a little loud there. Okay, it's quiet. But yeah, in in all the jobs I've worked, especially ones that I've worked at for a long time, I, I've I've experienced that gentrification. You know. You know, friend, you know, friends that have been friends have, that have been there for a long time. One of you know, one of them goes bye bye. The other one, the other one ends up quitting too. And then, and then the people that get brought in to replace them, it's basically you got a big fragmented, you got a fragmented community. Or at best, they might actually like each other and might actually hang out. You know, they might actually hang out with each other, but. You know, it's, but it's it's going to be a, it's something that's going to take months or even years, you know, to to strengthen those bonds. I mean, I'm I'm trying to explain this the best way I can, but you know, and even then, that's only if you get lucky. I mean, I mean a lot. I mean, these days, um, with a few exceptions, um, a few. You know, a few of the more outgoing people that are that are in my store, everybody else for the most part keeps to themselves. You know, nobody um uh, I mean nobody plays soft you know, nobody in my nobody in my store plays softball anymore. Um again, one of one of the reasons was just people quitting. You know and plus uh my big reasoning, my big reasoning is just, is um, oftentimes they would have softball out of, out, of, out of work, on one of my work nights, not one of my off nights. So, I'm usually real, real iffy on, um, you know, doing more physical activity after I've spent, spent around eight hours already doing physical activity. I mean, I want to go home and recoup. You know, not... You know, and not do more strenuous shit afterwards. And I just said that I wasn't going to talk about this anymore, but... But look what ended up happening. So let me... Let me try to get... Let me get off the subject again. But it... In case anyone hasn't noticed, this has pretty much been a foremost in my mind. That and playing City Skylines. <laughs> but... Oh, and, um... Yeah, to kind of a little side note on that game, um, I did try, uh... I did try adding a bus system. Like, I, I plopped down a bus depot, and... And shortly after, I'm like, no. Because unlike other SimCity games, you have to actually plan out a bus... You actually have to plan out the bus routes, and and I'm like, no, no, that is too much of a logistical nightmare right there. Plus, the way I designed my city, it's already gonna be walkable. I mean, a good, I mean, a good chunk of the, a good chunk of the, the zoning, or, uh, all. Oh, hang on, let me let me try to word this correctly. All of my commercial, industrial, and residential zones already have a lot of uh, already have a lot of walkable sidewalk paths in them. They're all wo they're all interspersed and interwoven between them and all that. So my city already is, for the most part, walkable. So adding adding buses, I didn't think about it till later, was kind of redundant. So yeah, but that was that was definitely one huge takeaway that I got from uh from all the city planning videos that I watched. Walkability. Yeah, cause the 
car because the car dependency's got to go. So. Um. Something else I was wanting to say too. I can't remember what. Okay. Um. But otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good. Uh, I. Other than. Other than me forgetting forgetting what it was I was trying to say, I think I've pretty much said everything that I wanted to. So. So otherwise, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and uh, I always have, always will, and um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, farewell for now. <laughs>